wild finish in L.A., Alabama, North Carolina. Alabama down one, Grant Nelson. Count it! And one, and Grant Nelson having himself a game. The best game of his career. Alabama up to 14 seconds left. R.J. Davis, ACC Player of the Year, throws it up. Mm -mm, no. Out of bounds, turnover, North Carolina. And we are back the other way for Alabama. We're going to the free throw line, 0.9 seconds. First free throw missed, second free throw missed. And Grant Nelson with the block to seal it. You don't even get a chance there as Alabama rallies in the second half to win it. 89 to 87. Wow. What a finish in Los Angeles. Grant Nelson, 19 of his 24 in the second half. 12 rebounds, five blocks, a block to end the game. And they block North Carolina to a spot in the Elite Eight. The first one seed knocked out of the tournament. The one seed from the West is done. Alabama moving on, advancing to take on Clemson, which is basically a national championship game rematch in football. Alabama Clemson for a spot in Phoenix. Back here in studio with Adam Finkelstein and uh, Chip Patterson here. Wow. Uh, Grant Nelson picked the perfect time to have the game of his life, didn't he, Adam? Yeah, the half of his life. And, and just for some context, this was one of the most um, recruited transfers in the country a year ago. And frankly, he'd largely underachieved relative to expectations coming into this season. First round of the NCAA tournament, three points, one rebound. Second round of the NCAA tournament, three points, one rebound. Basically a zero. This game, this half, Best player on the floor. My phone's blown up. Is this guy a lottery pick? Well, I don't know about that, but he certainly looked like it over the last 20 minutes. You see, this was what they envisioned when they brought him in last year. The size, the versatility. When he's making shots, it's a bonus. He protects the rim, and he can play in Nate Oates' offensive system. This was what they envisioned. It took a while, but he came through when it mattered the most. Chip, how about the guy from uh, North Dakota State here stepping up for Alabama? I mean, uh, 19 of his 24 in the second half. How was he able to dominate in the second half against North Carolina? I mean, this just inspired Will. I mean, this is somebody who raised their level of play on the very biggest stage. It's something that we see every single NCAA tournament, and Grant Nelson is just another example of it. And what stands out to me about Nelson's performance is how needed it was. I mean, Pringle was obviously laboring out there with what was reported to be, you know, a heel bruise. And Nate Oates had said going into the game that Pringle was dealing with a little bit of a foot issue. You know, are you injured or are you hurt? That kind of conversation. And so credit Pringle for staying in the game and trying to give it the best he can but when you don't have a uh, hundred percent from one of your most important post players being able to get Nelson leveling up his play particularly in the second half like that's what you need to be able to have really special runs this is an Alabama team that fell short of where they wanted to be one year ago you know they entered the sweet 16 as arguably the best team left in the field and did not make it to the final four now do we have a little bit of a redemption story uh, we were We'll see as now the tide go on to face the Tigers and yes a college football style uh, matchup that I'm very comfortable with but excited to see on Saturday night chip it was a tale of two halves first half for North Carolina 10 of 16 from beyond the arc second half two of 16 from beyond the arc can't win a game like that yeah, and I would say that I kind of understood that that was going to be the case just because you looked at who was making those three-pointers in the first half, whether it was Seth Trimble, whether it was Elliot Cadeau, and the number that stands out to me and the reason why, it is that 0 for 9 performance from ACC Player of the Year, R.J. Davis from behind the arc, 4 of 20 overall, and R.J. Davis and Caleb Love were the backcourt tandem that took down Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke Blue Devils in the Final Four back in 2022. And their split and Caleb Love's split from North Carolina was one of the most talked about storylines around the North Carolina basketball program for Caleb Love to fall short, the Pac-12 player of the year, followed by R.J. Davis falling short, the ACC player of the year. They both went over from behind the arc, uh, a disappointing symmetry that we have with the former teammates and the former backcourt mates right here, both going over nine, a little bit eerie, if I'm going to be honest, but yeah. disappointment all around. Yeah. Adam, look at this. I mean, this is this is wild.
to see this on a full screen. TV jargon, 0 for 9, both of them, former teammates, both winning player of the year in their respective conferences. You have to feel for R.J. Davis because he had a fantastic season and took his game to totally unprecedented levels. But the difference in the game today, quite frankly, was him. Uh, North Carolina, they out-rebounded Alabama. They shot it better from behind the three-point line over the course of the 40 minutes. They took care of the basketball. But unfortunate to say, their best player was 4 of 20 from the floor and 0 of 9 from behind the three-point line. So you tip your hat to what he did over the course of the season. It was a phenomenal season. But unfortunately, tonight was just not his night. And that is the heartbreak that goes along with this tournament. Because really, that was the X factor for this team. All right, so it's Alabama and Clemson in the Elite Eight for a spot in the Final Four. And Chip, they met earlier this season with Clemson winning that game 85-77. That was a long, long time ago. Where are these teams at now? And who would you take in this game, Alabama or Clemson? You know, it's so funny because I think that Clemson is closer to the form it had when it beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa than what it showed at the end of the ACC regular season. You know, Clemson's seeding in this tournament was thanks a lot to non-conference wins like beating Alabama in Tuscaloosa and not from some of the shortcomings and some of the disappointing performances that we saw from the Tigers. Right now, I, I like the Tigers and the way that this team is playing. I think that Alabama, a team that was already banged up coming into the game and now sees even more injuries stacked on top of that, I think that this is a spot where Clemson kind of gets a little bit of luck along the way facing an Alabama team that might have poured it out against North Carolina. I, I think right now, the way that we saw Chase Hunter, P.J. Hall play, I think I'm going to take the Tigers to advance to the Final Four. What do you think of this matchup? I, listen, Alabama's the most talented team. Uh, it's They're the best offense. Highest scoring uh, team in D1. Yeah, they're, they're the best offense, presumably left it, certainly in this region, but it's going to come down to this. Do they defend? I agree with Chip that I actually like the matchup for Clemson, especially if they can control the pace of the game. I also like Alabama a little bit more as the hunter and not the hunted. They are going to be the favorite going into this matchup, and they are a team that has a wide variety of possible outcomes because of the amount of three-point shots they take that makes them potentially possible makes them capable of beating a Goliath like we saw tonight but it also makes them susceptible to getting upset in a game like Clemson so I think it's going to be a really intriguing matchup Alabama is going to be the favorite but the matchup I think to Chip's point favors Clemson neither of these teams have been to the final four their football teams have played <laughs> the college football playoff among the final four in college but their basketball teams have never been a part of a Final Four and a Final Four spot on the line in Los Angeles. Alabama and Clemson, again, the Tigers beat the Tide 85-77 in November. P.J. Hall had a big game in that one. Uh, Mark Sears, game-high 23 points. Um, hey, this is, uh, this to me, this is a toss-up. The way both teams are playing right now, Alabama, the highest scoring team in Division One, Clemson. Maybe we're not talk maybe we didn't talk enough about Clemson coming to the tournament. We're talking about them now. We're talking about a final four spot on the line in LA. And coming up, back out to LA. We got a live report from Crypto.com Arena. Alabama punching its ticket to the Elite Eight next on CBS Sports HQ.